Hi guys, Jangro here, and welcome to episode three of this season two Valhelsia Enhanced Vanilla Let's Play. Last time we upgraded our Mason's house, and there it is behind me. We did a few things on stream. You can catch us on stream at twitch.tv slash Jangro. Uh, but some of the things we've done in the meantime, I've continued to upgrade the warehouse. It's You'll see why in a minute. This is pretty far away, but we moved all of our Masons. Sorry, we moved our Fletchers, and here they are. They're having a meeting. Hi guys. And soon we'll be upgrading our Fletcher house. I've been working on a design for that. We also had a little fun. You can see it over here. It's weird that we can't see this. There it is. I guess the nighttime sky obscured it. Oh, 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 cactus. That is not a beacon. That is a sand block tower all the way up to the build height limit. And it has a hole below it that falls all the way to bedrock. And we got the Caves and Cliffs advancement from that, which gives us a couple of skill points. So we had some fun dropping from 400 blocks into a single hole down to bedrock. There, there were some mishaps, uh, but we did that in stream too. So those are the kinds of things we do in stream. In the last stream, I got started on Applied Energistics 2. And every time I do a new world and, and get going on AE2, I fall in love with it all over again. If you were on the stream, you'll notice that I built it right here, a whole inscriber setup and some storage, ME storage. And I tore it all down because we're gonna do it all again in this episode. So we're all set up here and I'm going to go through all of the getting started from Applied Energistics, from getting your first Certus Quartz to inscribers, all the way to your first ME storage. And we're gonna demystify that in this episode. Stick around. Okay, the first thing we need to get in Applied Energistics 2 is Certus Quartz Dust, and we can find that all over the place. Certus Quartz is pretty easy to find in the caves, all over the place. So you're gonna see a lot of it. And grab as much as you can, because again, it's great for XP. Oh, dripstone creeper. If you can kill them, you can get dripstone. Okay, here we are back at the progress board. We've got our quartz, our Certus quartz dust. And the next thing we're going to want to do is we need some crystals. Now you may have been lucky and got a crystal or two when you were mining Certus quartz, but if not, we can make it, no big deal. And we also need to make Fluix dust and then Fluix crystals. And you make these by growing them in water. Weird, I know. So to get some Certus Quartz crystal, we need a Certus Quartz seed, which we get with Certus Quartz dust and some sand. So we've got our dust. Let's grab some sand. We've got lots of that right here. Perfect. And man, we need a crafting table up here. Okay, here we go. We've got we've got a crafting table. Let's be a little more prepared, Scott. How about that? So if we we make some seed. We'll just, let's not use up all our dust. Make 32 seeds. So we get two seeds per um, per craft. So we've got half a stack. To make Fluix dust, that's a little different. We need to throw redstone dust, charged Certus Quartz crystal, and nether quartz. So we can't make the, flu the Fluix dust until we get to the next step. So let's grab this bucket of water off the wall. Put that right here, and we just throw the seeds in there. Now, up oh, my magnet's on. Careful with that. Do that again. Now, the thing with seeds, uh, as they grow, you'll see them get larger. This takes about 20 minutes in real life time. So this is going to take a while, but they will never despawn. So these will turn into Certus Quartz crystals, and they won't ever despawn. So that's pretty cool. As we progress and we get power, we can make these crystal growth accelerators. Uh, we need power for that. With multiple accelerators around that pool of water, it will make crystals grow much, much faster. You can even watch them grow um, if you can get four or five accelerators around a pool of water. That's going to get us to the charger. And while that's growing, we'll, we'll get the charger going. So with power in Applied Energistics 2, there's this thing called a vibration chamber. And that's just like a furnace turned into power. Let me just place that. And we're going to need a ton of power in Applied Energistics. We're going to end up... We're going to end up building a ton of these things, probably. Now, with Applied Energistics 2, you can use power from other mods. Like in this particular pack, we've got Tech Reborn. But I'm not going to make Tech Reborn generators right now. I'm just going to fill this thing up with charcoal 
And the vibration chamber is, I think, pretty smart. It's not going to create power when it doesn't need to, or at least it's going to dial things down so it's not cranking through your fuel while you're not using it. So now that we've got a vibration chamber, we can get a charger. Now a charger needs power, and since we don't have any cable, we're just going to drop it right on top of this thing. And it says it's offline because it's not connected to a network, but I believe it is getting power. Let's check on our crystals. They aren't even close to being grown up. I do have some Certus Quartz crystals here, so let's just move on and charge a few of these things. So we just put it in here. You can see the sparks flying, and in very little time, it'll turn into charged Certus Quartz. Sometimes it takes longer than others. There's one, two, see how much quicker that was, and three, much quicker. Okay, now we've got three of those. Now we can make flux. So we put this here and this here. We throw redstone, nether quartz, and charged certus quartz into the same pool of water. No big deal. So this is going to be careful not to pick up our cooking And we gotta be careful not to pick these things up either. I think we're short a... Okay. Since those float to the surface, there they go. They turned into flux dust. Much faster than the seeds. So that's a nice quick way to get flux dust. And now we can make flux crystals because we have some dust. Put that here with some sand and we get flux seeds the same way. And we just toss those in the water. And those will grow. Those take, I think, just as long as the Certus Quartz seeds to grow up, but we're on our way. Speaking of getting power from other sources, we can use this energy acceptor and we can put this thing down and it will take input, energy input from any other uh, energy mod like Tech Reborn, Power, Mechanism, whatever you happen to be playing with. It will convert it into applied energistics power. Then you just connect it to your network and then it powers everything. So we're not going to need that. We'll just leave that there for now. Okay, now that we've got charged Certus Quartz and we've learned how to grow our crystals, it, they're still growing. You can see that the Certus Quartz crystals have got a little bigger, but we've got a lot of time left. I'm, I'm impatient. So let's get these charged things going. And I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and we're going to talk about cable and Fluix cable which is way down here when I was talking about when I'm going to talk about networking. But this Fluix glass cable is easy to make early on. As soon as you have a couple of Fluix crystals, you can make this glass cable. And this is just networking cable. It transmits you know, network data and it also transmits power uh, between devices in the network. So we just need a piece of this quartz fiber, which is just some sort of quartz dust and some glass, glass panes, I think is what you need there. Really easy to get. I've got some glass cable here and I've got a little more here. I made this whole build, I think I mentioned, in stream last week. So I've got all this stuff already, but I'm trying not to skip ahead too much. We're gonna go in the progression. So I've got some Fluix glass cable and let's build the crystal growth accelerator right over here next door. Two, three, four. And so these four growth accelerators, you can just do one uh, or four or even put one underneath there on the bottom and you get five and things go really fast. And we just need to connect this stuff to power. So now the vibration chamber. I think it has to go into the dot on the top. And we just need to connect these all together. Like that some water in here and let's pick up these seeds here and toss them into here and you can see that's going to grow these are going to grow like almost instantly and we've still got some seeds here they're not stacking because they're different percentages of growth there we go there, and when they're done, they float. Crystals are done, the quartz crystals are done, and the Fluix crystals, you can see them growing up nice and fast. There they go. Rises to the top when it's done, and there they go, they're all floating. We can use that floating mechanism to automate this, by the way, so keep that in mind for later. 
Okay, now we've, with very little patience, got our Fluix crystals and our Certus Quartz crystals. To progress more in the game at this point, we need to find these presses. And these things are found in meteorites. Now, thankfully, we have got charged Certus Quartz, which we can use to make this meteorite compass. Now, meteorites, you can see them on the map, typically. They can be more or less rare. They look like this on the map. And in fact, I think I've cleaned this one out entirely of Skystone, but there's usually a black circle in the middle. And they could be underwater, more or less easy to find in your world. Here's one. This is what they look like. So just some exploring can usually produce enough meteorites to find what you need. And these, inside a meteorite, there's always a Skystone chest, which is surrounded by this Fluix block. And these Fluix blocks uh, turn into Fluix crystals. So if you, as soon as you find a meteorite, things become a good deal easier. And the Skystone, you're, you're going to need later. So you're going to want to mine uh, on a good amount of Skystone. Now, if you're playing this in Dalhousie Enhanced Vanilla, you need to be mining level 30 to mine Skystone, as you can see right here. So you're going to need to progress a good ways in um, in this mod pack to mine Skystone. But if you're just playing this with no skill system in it, you're, you're obviously going to be able to mine it right away. Now, in each of these chests is one or more um, of these presses, and there's four kinds. A silicon press, logic press, calculation press, and engineering press. And these are used to make the processors to progress farther in the game. So at this point, you should... Use a compass if you haven't found some, and it always points to the nearest meteorite, which is this one right here. Pointing, I think it's pointing to this one, which was pretty close by. Now, if we get far enough away from it so it's not registering that one, it would point to a different one. And that's how I actually, in this, in this playthrough, I had to go, I'd use this compass for that. I normally don't have to. I can usually find them pretty easily just by running around and looking on the map. So once you've done that and you've searched around, found your meteorites, and you've got your presses, all four of them, you can progress on in Applied Energistics. Okay, if you have made it this far, what, there's a spider somewhere. Let's, must be upstairs. Let's get rid of that. That is going to be annoying. Go away, go away. Okay, where were we? If you've got this far, we've got Cirrus Quartz, we've learned how to grow crystals from seeds and to make seeds from the dust and sand. So we've got the crystals, we've charged the Certus Quartz crystal, and we found meteorites, maybe using the compass to get all of the four types of presses. That brings us to the processors, which we make with the inscriber. And I think this is where people probably drop off in learning applied energistics, but it's really not that complicated. Let's grab this inscriber. Let's put it down right in front of the furnace. It needs power just like the charger needs power. And it's just, it's a machine, you put things in it. Let's grab our, let's grab the logic press. That's the cheapest one. That just uses gold. We'll grab some gold. So this works like this. You put a press in here and the press can go in the top or the bottom slot, doesn't matter. And then you put in the item that goes with that press. Logic press is gold. Calculation press is service quartz. Engineering press is a diamond. And here we have print, a printed logic circuit. This is, this is halfway to a uh, logic processor. So we'll grab that. Now to make a logic processor, let's take a look in REI for this. It requires a printed logic circuit, printed silicon in an inscriber with some redstone to get the logic processor. Multi-stage process. To get printed silicon, we need the silicon press. So let's grab that. We'll put that in here. And we need to put silicon in there. And to get silicon, looks like this, we need to smelt some Certus Quartz dust. And we can just go and drop that right in the smelter, the furnace rather. Just like this. There we go, we've got a piece of silicon. Now we head back up. Put the silicon in with the silicon press, same thing happens. And now we have printed silicon. And now we take the, the inscriber has to come out or, or the things won't go in. We put the printed silicon in here. 
and the printed logic circuit in here with some redstone dust. And here we go, we've got a logic processor. And so that's pretty tedious if you're just gonna use one inscriber and you can't stack things up. You can only put one in at a time. It's it's very manual process, but we can automate this. And once we automate the creation of processors, everything else gets much, much easier. So let's take a quick look how to make a basic, a semi-automatic inscriber setup. Okay, so let's automate this inscriber. Let's break this. We're gonna need to move that. I broke the cables, the Fluix cables going to the um, growth accelerators because they constantly use power and we're using up a lot of our charcoal blocks to keep this thing going for nothing. So I just broke those cables. There'll be better ways later to turn that on and off automatically. Okay, so we're just gonna set this thing up over here. So let's start from the bottom. We need a barrel where the final processors are gonna end up. So like the logic processor is going to end up there. And we put a hopper here and an inscriber on top of the hopper. Now inscribers are kind of tricky because you have to insert from the bottom and the top. And as you know, with normal vanilla mechanics, like a hopper, you can't insert from the bottom. You can't insert things up. Oh, and, and this spot we can insert from any of the sides and we can extract from any of the sides. And likewise, hoppers can't very well extract from a side of something. They have to do it from the bottom, right? So thankfully there's a trick. So if we go over here to our crafting table and we can make a wrench. There are two wrenches in a AE2, certain nether quartz and certus quartz. They are the same. So it doesn't matter which one you make. I'm gonna make the nether quartz wrench because I have more nether quartz than I do certus quartz. And if we right click on an inscriber, it rotates it, two, three, four, and there it is back to normal. So we click it once, turn it 90 degrees. Now, and I'm gonna put the wrench away so I don't accidentally click with it and rotate it. So now, you know, it, sh it shows the same, but the top is over here and the bottom is over here. And now with hoppers, we can insert into the bottom and the top. And so this here is going to get the uh, printed logic circuit and here's gonna get the printed silicon and here's gonna get redstone. And now this can be insert from the left, right, back and front. So we can insert from right up here. So now if we go up here and put an inscriber here, inscriber here. Oh, and the wrench, by the way, can easily break stuff too. So if you just shift right click with that wrench, it makes things a bit easier. I used a hopper before to climb on. Okay, that's fine. Let's do that again. And the inscriber right here. Now, just like before, we have to rotate these both 45 to 90 degrees. And again, we need hoppers. Let's use the sky stone this time and put hoppers on top of that and then popper on top of that. What happened? That was weird. So now this one, it's on its side. We're gonna put a logic press in here and then from the side, which is actually up top there, it's going to get the gold. So if we put gold in this hopper, just put one piece for now, it's gonna go right in there and it's not powered yet, so it's not gonna do anything. And here in this one, we'll put the silicon press. And this one is going to get redstone. You can see the redstone comes into the middle of this one and the printed logic circuit is gonna go on this side, the printed silicon is gonna go on this side and it'll turn it into the logic processor drop it down in here and come out here. And here is a about as compact as you can get semi-automatic inscriber setup to make a processor out of its raw materials. Now we need some more silicon. We put the silicon up in this hopper. Now we can put chests up top there obviously, but hoppers have some inventory so we'll just leave it like this for now. 
And so now if we power this, and we can do this with glass cable. So those three inscribers need power. And if we just run it down here and here, we sit back and we're going to see these things work. They're, they're going through their, their motion. Now the two pieces came down here and now it is going through its, and it dropped it into here. We should have two now. And if we put one more piece of gold in that one, there's all the pieces in this one. Now it takes a little while here. We can put acceleration cards in here and this, th this whole process will go much faster. And there you go. Now, in order to make the other types, we would have to swap this logic press out with one of the other two presses and then put in a different ingredient for it. So instead of doing that, let's expand this system a little more so it will make all three types of processors. All right, so rather than swap out the different presses inside that inscriber, let's put down, let's put two more inscribers next to it like this. Here and here, rotate them 90 degrees, hoppers here and here. We'll put the calculation press in this one and the logic press, sorry, engineering press in this one. Okay, so a couple blocks here, build up, put a hopper here and a hopper here. Okay, now this hopper is gold, this hopper is Certus Quartz Crystal, and this is diamond. Power and power. Now if we put diamonds in here, and let's just put one so that diamond turned into and here's the calculation circuit and another oh and an engineering circuit the other diamond came through here and there we go so this is now a semi-automatic inscriber. So we can just dump our ingredients in here, silicon, gold, gold ingots, certus quartz crystal, diamonds, and it will automatically create everything we need. Oh, and redstone in this one. Yeah, and there we go. All right, so we are, we're in the home stretch here, guys. Our ultimate goal here in this episode is to get a crafting terminal set up with an ME drive and some storage cells. And to connect these things together, we need cables. Let's talk a little bit about cables. So the Fluix ME glass cable, we've already seen it. Um, a normal cable, whether it's a glass cable or whether it's one of these Fluix smart cables, they carry eight channels. And this is, okay, so I said we lose people with inscribers. I think we really lose people when we talk about channels in applied energistics, but it's also not that complicated. Anything you connect to a network or to an ME device, requires a channel. So we can connect up to eight things in one stretch of glass cables. Now to confuse things a little more, inscribers and chargers don't take up a channel because they're actually not an ME device. Um, you know, likewise with, with growth accelerators, none of these things require any channels, but they need power and the power comes through these cables. However, these, these devices, this ME crafting terminal, the ME drive, ME item storage cells, which go in a drive, so it doesn't take up a channel, but the drive itself does. Now the controller is not actually necessary right away because if we don't need to connect more than eight things together, we can just make a network out of a stretch of glass cable or smart cable. And these are the same except smart cables have an indicator on them that shows you how many channels are getting used. So let's grab some of this stuff. I've got some smart cable. I've got some glass cable here already, and we can grab these things off the wall here. And let's just set it up. Since I've already made these things, we've got a crafting terminal, we've got an ME drive, and an item storage cell. And we can just put these things down. This is like the bare minimum you need. And we can just make it touch the vibration chamber, and it's going to get powered. And I think we can, maybe we can even stick a crafting terminal right on this thing. Let's see if that works. No, it doesn't. 
So we take our wrench, shift right click, we grab that, and we'll put this cable right on top and the crafting terminal on that, and it is powered up. And if we put this ME drive, let's try, let's put this smart cable on here so we can see what's happening. Oh, I had this filtered. That's what, that's what happened. So we put this drive back in here and we look in here, we remove that filter and now we see everything that was in here when I had this set up on our stream last week. So I've got some more drives that I made last week and they're full of stuff. So now I can, I can have access to this stuff again. I took it apart and I lost access to all these things. And so we've got this 4K storage cell, 16K storage cell, and 1K storage cell. So this one holds 1K of bytes. And a byte is amount of data. One item does not take up one byte. Um, and each cell holds 63 types of items. So now if we look in here, we've got all this stuff in here, which is pretty cool. So this system right now, just these few blocks with some item storage cells in it is basically a gigantic chest and crafting table mixed together. So everything we dump in here, we can just, just put stuff in here. Put this tin in here, put the sky stone in here, the gold ingots, paper, all these things that we don't need to keep in our inventory right now. This energy acceptor all, all goes in here. We can sort it by name, by number of items, different sort order. We can store fluids in here too with fluid storage cells. Uh, so we can have mix these things all together, set up crafting and, and that sort of thing. It's just an amazing system. This is why I play modded Minecraft. If there's one reason I would give, it's this. It's so amazing. I love applied energistics or refined storage. Either one, really great. So let's talk a little bit about this. So now we can see this smart cable here has two channels used. You see those two lines there? This would have worked with the, let's just, for science, show that this works too. The only reason we couldn't see these things before was that I had something typed in here and it's filtering it. And that's it, we've got our storage system set up. Now let's take a look at how to make these things because I want you to see, it's pretty involved. So if we take a look at the crafting terminal, which is right here, the ME crafting terminal, requires a calculation processor. So that's the Certus Quartz uh, processor, crafting table, and an ME terminal. An ME terminal just doesn't have this crafting interface in it. Now, an ME terminal needs an illuminated panel, formation core, annihilation core, and you can just kind of go through the process, logic processor. Illuminated panel needs some normal stuff here, but this quartz glass is made with Certus Quartz dust and some panes. And these formation core and annihilation core needs Certus Quartz Crystal, Fluix Dust, Logic Processor for the formation core. And the annihilation core needs Nether Quartz, Fluix Dust, and a Logic Processor. So you see, it's not a ton of stuff to get here, but you know, you need these processors. The ME drive needs a couple of engineering processors. So that's two diamonds and some iron and, and glass cable. So two diamonds to make those two processors for the ME drive. But when it gets where it gets really expensive is when we're talking about the storage item storage drives. And to make these, just to make a 1K storage cell needs, you know, these easy to get things, but an, a 1K storage component. And a 1K storage component is pretty easy. It's a logic processor, but 1K does not hold that much. It's like a chest. Uh, so we then move on to a 4K ME item storage cell. And that requires a 4K storage component with all that other stuff. One 4K storage component is a calculation processor, so a little more expensive, and three 1K ME storage components. So that's three logic processors and a calculation processor. If we get all the way up to 128, or it's 256 actually, is the biggest. 256k storage cell needs a 256k storage component which needs 364k storage components and skystone dust so these this is pretty expensive a 64k storage component needs 316k and a 16k needs for 3 4k and that needs 3 1k so you can see how this multiplies and gets really really expensive there's a witch around 
So anyway, there is the basic crafting terminal ME drive with some storage cells in it. And again, you don't want to go straight to the biggest possible storage cell because each storage cell, no matter how big it is, only holds 63 types of items. So if you put in, you know, as you can see, I'm using 55, 55, and 49. I've almost used up the storage cells items that they can hold, even though I haven't nearly reached the number of items that I can store in them because I've got, you know, I've got all these things in here. So, you know, each type of bow takes up a different type of item, you know, these different tools and things like that. So it, it uses up the item space much faster than it uses up the storage space, if that makes sense. I just, I can't focus with this, which where, where in the world? There it is. Okay. Stuck in the leaves. Okay. That was easy enough. All right, so that's a very simple, about as simple as you get, ME network. It's got two components taking up two channels on this little tiny network here. So as I said before, each run of cable, so you know, we can add more smart cable to this and we can expand our network. And it, right now it has two channels used up and we can connect more things to this, this run. And when it exceeds eight channels, it then shuts down. When you start to grow past eight channels, which we're going to get to very quickly, we're going to need to expand on that. And to do that, we use the controller. And if we put the controller down, let's just really quickly, the controller now is powered. There's, the whole network is powered. So the controller got power and it's still only using two channels. The controller itself doesn't use a channel, but each side of the controller can support cables. So you can see here, this side has nothing on it. So it's not using any of its channels. This side is using two channels. So we can connect smart cables up to each side of this controller, technically six if it's floating in the air and we can hold, we can manage six times eight channels. There's actually dense smart cable, which has 32 channels each. So we can do six times 32 channels off of one ME controller and we can link ME controllers together and have a massive number of channels that to man we can manage. And even beyond that, we can use peer-to-peer -peer networking and expand an incredible amount of um, components you can add to your ME network. We also didn't get to the energy cell, but we can put an energy cell down. Again, just connect it somewhere to the network. We can put it over here. It doesn't use a channel and it's gonna fill up with energy and it kind of acts as a UPS a universal power supply. So if we run out of coal, we're going to have this backup supply of 200,000 energy units. You can see our coal is getting used up pretty, pretty quickly now, but we're still just working off one vibration chamber. It's cranking out 40 per tick right now because we're filling up that storage unit. All right, I think we'll wrap up there. Those, that ME controller back there, that was kind of a preview of, of things to come. We don't need it just yet, but we're going to be setting up auto crafting, all kinds of ways to get items in and out of our system from other mods like create where we're generating all kinds of resources and also using those resources to process them into other resources so we're going to set that all up we'll get going on that in kind of in the next in the next video or two in this kind of applied energistic series within the dalhousie enhanced vanilla let's play season two series Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this helps demystify applied energistics a bit. Please subscribe. Keep up on the upcoming videos. Like the video and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time.